Hi, welcome back to I Love Learning Asia Learning Portal. Thank you for watching this video. My name is James Chen. I'm your certified coach and trainer. Today, I will be sharing on Chapter Three: Understanding the Realities for the topic on coaching and mentoring skills for leaders high performance. I hope you have been following up. In this one, this chapter, we are really going into coaching, <coughs> understanding realities. In this chapter, we will learn how to mark the beginning of the coaching journey, the beginning of the coaching journey, in which you and your staff will frame the coaching, what frame the coaching framework, what you would like to do. Okay, so <coughs> for this module we will plot the horizon as a beacon guiding your employee to a specific measurable attainable realistic and timely goal this is a great start but there is also a need to know where your journey begins placing a marker at the starting point of your employee's coaching journey enables both of you and your employee to determine and measure progress. The goal in this offering may never seem to get closer because you have no point of reference to gauge your progress if you didn't do it. Okay. So in this module, we will mark the ground to begin where you're supposed to begin and start the whole coaching process. So getting the picture right is very important. So let's move into getting a picture of where you are now. What is happening now? That's the first question we would like to ask. And then the next question we would like to ask is, how often is this happening? Then, when does it happen? Okay, and then what is the effect? So I hope you can follow with these four questions. Getting the picture of where you are, that is what is happening now. How often is this happening? When does it happen? What is the effect? So framing the reality of the situation for your employee is an important step to accepting the coaching process. It is easier for you to outline your employee's performance problem, but Will they accept it? Does that does it going to create the most accept, receptive environment? But sincerely saying, a lot of people do not like to be pinpointed. This is your mistake. Here you are. This is your mistake. So what do we normally do when somebody tells you this is your error, this is your mistake, and this is that, this is you? First thing comes to mind is a denial. You did not understand which situation I'm in, where am I coming from? How can you just make your judgment? It's not fair to me. So these are the things that we face. So it is, it is very important that we come in terms with reality. So we relook at the four questions. What is happening now? How often is this happening to you? When does it happen? What is the effect? And all these findings shouldn't be from you as a coach but the realization should come up from your employee this is what we're going to do at coaching we do not judge but rather we let the coach or your employee understand this is where i am i need help and you as my coach can help me as a boss as a leader as a manager can you help me it sh they should come to the realization and understanding and not us as leaders telling them hello this is your problem this is your fault can you solve it if they can solve it if they can have the answer to it i don't think coaching is necessary so that's the reason why we use the coaching process which is a gentle way establishing establishing a good relationship between you and your staff and collaboratively or working together to solve the issue okay so i hope you understand 
coaching is very important. The, co the process is very important to help you and your staff foster a relationship in which both of you agree to work together to build you, the, to build the, the, the affected staff so that this staff can perform well. They have the potential but they are just not able to perform because there could be something bothering them. So we need to identify the obstacles. So what are the obstacles? So we have what we call the IRA format, which is identifying, I stand for identifying the obstacles. R, what are the root causes? What are the root causes? What are the root causes that affected them? What made them like that? We need to understand their situation. And next thing is, we collaboratively, we work together to find an antidote for this situation. So we call that IRA, identifying the obstacles, root cause, root out the cause, R, A, antidote given. Okay. So have a frank discussion with your employee and determine what are the road, road blocks or what is the road block. Is it because of company resources? Is it because of their personal issues? They have some personal issues that are bothering them. So what is the, ob what is the obstacles? Okay. And what are the root causes? Is it related to their family or their work? Or what is the root cause? Okay. Many times underlying emotions and problems may be the cause of the obstacles. Asking, ask probing questions and jot down answers. You might realize they have a fear that must be addressed. So the next one, we look at antidote. Give them an antidote. A remedy to the situation is needed in order to get past these obstacles. So brainstorming with your employee on ways to remove the obstacles whether it is within your help, within your control or it's within the staff control. In some cases, you may have to try several different antidotes. Be patient if the cause is genuine. No matter what the perceived obstacles are, do not let it stifle your coaching objective. Rarely, you may encounter an employee that throws obstacles constantly. You're throwing obstacles constantly on your way to derail your effort to try to coach them. Identifying this and addressing the issues will help your employee documenting every conversation. But it'd be good if you get your staff to openly, openly share all this with you. So it's very important that that relationship is built with that needed need with that close needed relationship and trust build your staff will be able to share with you what are the obstacles how you can work together to address the obstacles there are some especially like mothers single mothers they might have problem due to the not able to get someone to look after the children for that particular day so they might react in some emo they might have some emotional reaction which is un uncalled for. So these are things that understanding, mutual understanding and building the mutual trust is very important to ensure that the coaching process is carried out properly and accurately. Okay? So it is good to explore some past, what actually happened, what are the costs. So goals that were met, examples exploring the past could be goals that were met, how you met, how you were able to accomplish those goals, what are the things that you used to accomplish these goals, and can this method apply now? Or what are the necessary adjustments you need to make so that these things, these obstacles can be removed, can be overcome? Okay? And what are their great behaviors they have in the past? Why is it not happening now? Or can we have that same can we have your employee buy in to have the same behavior again? Can we have the great attitudes?
problem solved. These are the things that we are looking at exploring the past. How we solve problems in the past. Can it do it again? So there is no end to every obstacle. There's always a way we can solve it. So the goals that were met before, learn from the previous experiences. What are the great behaviors that we have during that time? What are the great attitudes of that time, that successful time? Can we duplicate it again? What are the problems that we solve? Can we run through all these experiences? So setting a positive environment opens the door for the next part of the growth model. Okay? So we must have running through all the past successes will help, help build a positive and good environment. So it is very important that your coach, your coachee or your staff be willing to work with you and you both enjoy a very happy relationship. Okay? So thank you so much for watching this chapter 3 with me and uh, my next chapter will be developing options. What are the options available or what are the options we can develop together. Okay, so stay tuned for, to my chapter 4 which is coming up at ilovelearning.asia learning portal. See you. Bye.